Buongiorno, uh, buongiorno everybody and welcome to uh, our first uh, uh, online uh, webinar. Uh, this is a new series that uh, Lucas is organizing for all our customers, all our uh, passionate, or all, the, all our friends around the world globally. Um, together with me there is Jason Roll from the other side of the pond, from, from US. Uh, a special, very special thanks for Dylan von Kleist, uh, uh, who is helping and making uh, Jason and myself from US, and uh, to Samantha Ashton that is here with me, uh, helping me for, for all the technical stuff. So uh, what is this? It's a new series, CORE, we call it CORE, which is an acronym that stands for uh, Continuous Online Rufus Education. We would like to do this periodically, so we wait for all of our friends in, uh, in uh, all around the world. Um, the first, uh, the first uh, topic will be uh, about uh, uh, the four movements, the four uh, systems that we have and uh, uh, all what we are doing is, is uh, for you. So we would like to give you content, to give you information, to share information on, on how to use at best our systems. Uh, we will start with an introduction uh, with, uh, with what's, uh, what's our history, what's our uh, story, the story of the company, of the company Rupes. Why our name is Rupes? Rupes means realizzazione utensili pneumatici elettrici speciali, which means uh, something like uh, manufacturing uh, of. Uh, uh, it doesn't go. One second. Okay. Manufacturer of specialty pneumatic and electric tools. This is what we do. This is what we always been doing. Uh, of course, during the years we have changed. Uh, we started as a tool producer. Uh, now we are a, we, we claim ourselves as, as a system producer. So we will see our systems. We will see our four systems. A bit of history. Um, we started 71 eight years ago. Uh, Samantha, can you please broaden the, the view of the presentation? Thank you. Um, there is more. Thank you very much. Much better now. Let's see some of the milestones of our history. Let's start from the first one, which is in, uh, in 51, the creation of our first electric tool. It was a sender, uh, electric sender, very old, but very reliable, very strong one. Uh, then we moved to uh, the first uh, drill with the polymeric uh, body, with plastic body. It's uh, a tool that had, has changed the game of the tool because uh, plastic is more flexible, it's, more, uh, che it's cheaper, it's uh, safer because it doesn't conduct electricity. Uh, but the history of innovation of Rupus doesn't stop here. So let's see the next one, which is the creation of the first small palm senders. Uh, then we move to another milestone, which is the first gear driven polisher, which was a sender, but it could be used also for polisher. But uh, Rupus invented the movement of the gear driven. Uh, then uh, we made in two, uh, 2008 uh, the large diameter big foot orbital polisher. Um, again, a game changer in the history of polishing. Uh, the, the, the starting of the big foot uh, era. So a new era for polishing, a new, uh, uh, a new way to work. And then at last, uh, a few years ago, this 2015, so we are back in, we are in our days, uh, hybrid technology. So uh, the first small, very small polisher and sender, you can also wet sand with the tool uh, for Benny Bean, uh, the hybrid. Okay, I think that most of these things will be subjects for next webinars. We ask all of you to be, uh, to be on. on updated and so keep in touch, follow our pages, Facebook pages and so on. Um, who is with us now today? We have two main uh, um, facilities, the headquarters here near Milan in Italy, in the north of half of Italy where I am in this moment and in Denver, Colorado we have a brand new facility it was open the end of last year. Uh, where we have production, as well as we have production in Italy, uh, we have uh, big food centers, we make trainings, so a lot of activities going on in our two, uh, in our two facilities. 
Uh, uh, see the topic of this of this day of today. Uh, so tool movements. We have three main tool movements, but we have four systems. We will see this today. We will see why we claim to have four systems, uh, depending on the need of the customer. Okay. Uh, let's see the the, the, the movements. We have three movements, which are single movement, single action. So we have the 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 abrasive, uh, just going in one direction, uh, and two dual action. So we have two movements combined together. Uh, now the first one, the drum or barrel polisher, is a simple polisher, very simple. <clears throat> There's um, and Samantha. There's uh, Okay, it's a good time to, to go on to move the, the slides. Hmm. Nothing. Uh, probably going to move now. Yeah, okay. Uh, we have the, the first two, which are very simple uh, polishers. Uh, we barely produce any of these. Uh, they could polish us instead uh, remain in the last three categories, in the last three um, movements. So I was talking about drum or barrel polisher, pretty easy one. It's a sort of roller. We have abrasives on that, and uh, it's a single action. So we have a linear spread pattern on the surface. It's mainly for industrial application, for polishing floors or, or roofs or uh, marine big surfaces, okay? Not very common um, ideal when you deal with very big surfaces. Then, uh, the second one. The second one is the orbital polish. Uh, it was very useful, it was very common years back. Uh, it's a single action, so we only have a, a plate uh, which is orbiting, there's no rotation involved. Uh, it's more common for sending, but there are also quite some polishes based on this movement, uh, mainly used for uh, applying waxes or doing um, fine, uh, uh, delicate, uh, soft works on a paint. Uh, and it's the least invasive to the paint. Uh, it's not strong enough to, to re remove defects from the surface. Okay, so it's a very basic tool. Um, Again, Lucas does not produce any polisher based on this movement. Let's go now on the uh, polishers that Lucas does and that Lucas believes to be uh, the best one. Uh, first one is rotary polisher. Rotary polisher is uh, a one a one action polisher, so the movement is single. It is the most traditional way to polish uh, a paint. Paint of a car, paint of, uh, I don't know, a furniture, any paint can be polished with any of these movements. The rotary is the most invasive, is probably the fastest one. It depends on the kind of abrasive that we use, on the kind of pads that we use. It is usually the fastest one, at least for one step, for the step when we need to remove material, the effects together with material, from a surface. Uh, it is a tool that is quite dangerous, not for the people, but for the paint. It makes a lot of heating on the paint, a lot of stress, mechanical stress, chemical stress. They are combined, so it's quite easy and quite uh, probable that we will uh, create some burning through, we will overheat the paint. So it's a tool that requests a lot of experience, a lot of time to get proficient with. Uh, nevertheless, it's still the most common. It's still the one that you can find more, you, more commonly. What we believe is it's not the best. Our policy, our philosophy as Lucas is we, most of us believe that the random orbital, which we will analyze in a few minutes, is the best one. But if somebody wants to have a rotary, we have it, and we believe we have among the best rotaries you can buy all over the world. Uh, let's go on with the following one. It's a gear driven. We have been the inventors, as rotors, of the movement of the gear driven sanders. Uh, and a few years later, uh, the same movement has been used uh, for, for polishing as well. It's also called force rotation orbital. Uh, 
The two movements, it's a dual action, so we don't have just rotation, we have rotation connected with orbital. We have two movements happening always together. You cannot stop the orbiting, you cannot stop the rotation, the two movements always happen combined. Uh, the rotation is anyway the dominant movement, so it's more similar to a uh, rotary than a uh, random orbital. Uh, but the, the, the orbiting movement will help us to reduce uh, the, the stress on the paint, will help us to reduce also the defects that rotary usually instill in, in the paint, create to the paint, and we normally call them holograms. So this is not a hologram-free movement, but it's a less creating holograms uh, than, than rotary tools. Uh, it's moderately invasive to the paint, not as much as um, not as much as a rotary. Uh, of course, since the rotary movement is uh, the dominant movement, on the exterior of the paint, on the external part, sorry, not the paint, but the, the pad, uh, that's the part that will cut more, that will have more action on the paint. Uh, it's an easy tool, it's, uh, it's an easy movement, it doesn't request a lot of technique, it doesn't request a lot of experience. It's, norm, it's many times used as a one-step correction, uh, but sometimes, since you might have some holograms, you could even need a second step. Let's go to the third one, which again we, as Rupus, have been pushing, have, we have been the inventor of the random orbital polisher with large circle, with large orbit. We believe this to be the most, most of the time, the best solution. We will see which one is the solution, the best solution, but we believe that this is normally the best one. Uh, it's also called dual action or free spinning. Why free spinning? Because the orbit, so this kind of movement is forced by the motor. The motor creates the orbit, while the rotation of the pad is free. The spinning is free. So there's no motor creating it, it's just a consequence of the spinning, of the, of the orbit. Uh, since there's no motor that creates the, the rotation, the rotation might happen, but might even not happen. Uh, it's better if it happens, uh, and that's why we suggest to use random orbital polishers with a technique that allows the rotation to happen. Uh, it's the least invasive on the paint. It means that it doesn't create a lot of stress on the paint. The movement is a soft movement. The quantity of work that you can do, the speed of the, the effect removal that you get from the um, from the from from this tool is uh, uh, the um, is the depending on uh, the um, on the orbit. The bigger the orbit, the faster the job. Okay. Um, Lucas, we have three movements. Okay. With what we claim, what we believe, what we strongly believe is that random orbital, field driven, and rotary polishes. We have now tools that can stay in each of the classes and with the best possible performance. Uh, let's go and, and see what, what's next. Comparison. Comparison is... Uh, yeah, Jason? Okay, then we will pass the, the line to, to Jason now. Probably the director is telling me that it's his time. Okay, okay good. So can you hear me okay, Fabrizio? Yes, I hear you very well. Oh, okay, thank you. So um, I will take over from here and we are going to transition from talking about the different tool movements as Fabrizio has described to more specific comparisons of the Rupus polishing systems. Uh, as we do this, we will use a color scheme to kind of illustrate the performance of our systems relative to each other. So we will use a gold, silver, bronze uh, color scheme to kind of illustrate, illustrate what we're talking about in terms of relative performance. So as we look at the performance of polishing systems and specifically the 
the three or uh, four main systems by Rufus, when we compare performance between these systems, we generally look at uh, different performance criteria. So cut speed and finish and the user experience and the learning curve, <clears throat> as well as efficiency in getting the job done. So when we talk of cut speed, it's about defect removal. How fast can we get a sanding mark out? How fast can we get a scratch out? And uh, when we look at finish, we are talking about the clarity in the paint and are we removing defects or are we putting defects in at the same time uh, in terms of a swirl mark, a rotary induced swirl mark or uh, a haze mark or a grayness. And then also when we compare performance, we look at the user experience. So the user experience is about the smoothness in our hands and how smooth it feels on the paint. It's also about uh, slinging product, uh, dusting on the surface and the pad drag, all the things that we feel as we are applying the system. Uh, with that, there's the learning curve and it's a good way to compare performance by uh, evaluating how long it takes a technician to really master the approach. So uh, some of these tools are technique dependent and some are less technique dependent. So we will compare those as well as efficiency and efficiency is all about the number of steps and the amount of time to get the complete job done. So let's go ahead and compare. So we will look at cut speed and this is about raw defect removal power. All of these tools, all the RUPA systems, uh, the uh, technology in orbitals have advanced so far that we are removing defects much faster today than we were 10 years ago. But if you're to compare the movements and the systems to each other, uh, we can give the rotary the, the gold stars for the fastest, uh, the most uh, defect removal. And that really has to do with how invasive it is on the paint. It removes material uh, very quickly. Um, but compared to the orbital tools, the gear driven and the random orbital, uh, they are not uh, a far distance behind, but they're very, very close. In fact, in some cases we hear from users that they're able to remove defects faster with the random orbital. Uh, but again, it tends to be a bit technique dependent but we will give that um, to the rotary. So on the finish side, when we're done with the application of the system, we clearly can expect the best result in terms of finish with the random orbital system. Uh, this is the least invasive on the paint and the least potential for putting in defects while we're taking them out. So there's no possibility, for example, of putting in a rotary induced swirl mark with a random orbital tool. So we give the, the gold stars to the random orbital system, uh, the red or the bronze stars for the rotary because this tendency of leaving a rotary induced swirl mark. So for user experience, and again, we're talking about smoothness and sling and dust and pad drag uh, the random orbital is clearly the smoothest, easiest to maneuver around a car. So we give the user experience strength to the random orbital system. And again, the rotary, because it's on center disc, constantly pulling to one side, uh, the user experience is a bit more challenging because you have to negotiate that, that pull to one side. Now the learning curve for random orbital and gear driven orbitals are uh, very, very short relative to the rotary. The rotary is measured in weeks and months and years to really master that approach. Um, however, the orbital tools, both the gear driven and the random orbital, uh, someone can learn it very quickly. There is a little bit of technique involved, but uh, the learning curve is relatively much shorter. Then for efficiency in terms of the number of steps, uh, the amount of time to get to the final result, 
we clearly give the gold stars to the random orbital system again. And um, the gear driven is a close follower behind and the rotary, we do not have the expectation that you can do one step paint correction with the rotary because more often than not, um, many times you will need subsequent polishing steps when you start out with a rotary. So that's the uh, performance comparisons between our systems. What we'll do now is we will evaluate very specific situations or applications where one of these or two of these systems might perform better than another. So all paint polishing is not the same from car to car, from vehicle to vehicle. And there are situations where these systems might perform better than others. So when we look at the scenario of the objective of having no swirl mark, so we want to polish the car in such a way that we completely prevent the possibility of making a rotary induced swirl mark. So between these three systems, if you ask yourself, which one would be the best approach for that objective of absolutely no swirl mark, then we'd have to give it to the random orbital system because in that system, regardless of technique or skill or experience, the random orbital system cannot make a rotary induced swirl mark. So it's guaranteed to um, prevent swirl marks. So that would be the absolute best. Now the rotary we are not recommending under this scenario because again, the objective is guaranteed no swirl marks and the rotary system has that possibility. Uh, although some technicians have learned to use the rotary very, very well and to minimize the swirl marks, but for the average detailer around the world, it's a big challenge to apply a rotary system with a guarantee of no swirl marks. So how about this scenario where we're talking about completely preventing the risk of burning through the paint or actually more accurately saying, reducing the risk. Because any polishing, even rubbing by hand, has the possibility of burning through the paint. But all of these polishers, all of these systems have that potential, and it has to do with how thick the paint is before you start. But if you're comparing the abilities and the capabilities of these systems to each other, and the goal is I would like to try my best not to burn through this paint. Then we will give it to the random orbital system and we will not recommend the rotary. As we've said before, this is the most invasive, although very, very fast uh, heavy defect removal. It has that potential to remove too much material too fast. How about edge work? <clears throat> what we mean by edge work is the outside two inches of every painted panel on the vehicle. Uh, that's what we mean by edge work. We also mean tight areas, curves and contours, uh, but this particular area we're talking about is the outside edge of every panel on the car. And this answer might surprise you uh, that we are saying the rotary is the best for this approach. And the reason is because the rotary has no offset at all, no orbit, no offset. So if you want precision uh, at removing defects around the edge of a panel and you want to get very precisely to that edge, the rotary has the best ability to do that. And specifically, we recommend the Rupus Nano system. So the Nano, which is small tool, small pad, in the rotary setting is our absolute best performance at edge work of any tool we have. Now, these other tools, the gear driven, the random orbital, they are certainly capable of doing edge work, but it relies on technique a little more. So uh, the nano, small pad, small tool for that edge work is the absolute best approach. Now this scenario about oxidized gel coat on boats or RVs, uh, we have that oxidized, dry, pasty, you know, oxidation on top of the gel coat surface. 
and which of these systems would perform the best in that scenario, um, we would have the rotary again. And the reason is because it can remove this material very quickly. And that's the objective on oxidized gel coat is you have to remove that oxidation and get it off the surface. Uh, and then it's a good recommendation to do a second step after the rotary with a random orbital system. So in this situation, we are recommending a multi-tool approach. The rotary first step, remove that oxidation quickly, get it out of the way, and then do your final polishing with a random orbital system. And that is your best result on oxidized gel coat. This next scenario is specific to collision repair and body shops and freshly painted cars. It's a condition called dieback, and it goes like this. The shop has painted the car, they have sanded the car, they have polished the car, and they move it in the sun for a couple of hours, or they wash the vehicle, and sandy marks or swirl marks come back on the surface. Um, so in reality, they did not come back, uh, they didn't go away is what happened. So they were not completely removed. And in this condition, what happens is the paint actually swells and the defects become less visible. This is a result of heat and friction. So if you evaluate these three systems, you can think about in this scenario, what would be advantageous is to polish in such a way that we are not introducing heat and friction, we're not solvent loading the paint, and we're not swelling the paint. So in this condition, we would say the random orbital system would be the best approach because that introduces the least amount of heat and friction uh, to the surface. The other tools, the gear driven and the rotary can certainly do this, uh, but it would be technique dependent, as we said. Next up, the situation, and some of you are business owners and you have employees or you have uh, new employees that are coming in and you need to quickly educate them and teach them how to polish cars. And if you look at these three systems um, and we look at the learning curve as we've talked about, the orbital systems, the gear driven and the random orbital are clearly the best uh, with the shortest amount of learning curve. And we would give the gear driven melee system uh, the, the caption of being the easiest to learn, uh, the easiest to maneuver. And the reason that is, is when you pull the trigger, you get uh, both movements and you don't have to think through both movements. You just apply it to the car and it does the job. Now the random orbital is the safest on the paint, the least invasive, uh, but it is also easy to learn. But the one thing you have to figure out is that uh, rotation because it is random. Now the rotary, you can also put that in the hands of a new employee with low experience and very low knowledge, but it will take a lot longer to get to the point where you can trust that they won't be damaging paint. The next scenario is about, uh, and I believe this is the last one that we'll talk about, is the situation of delicate paint, uh, difficult to finish paint. And this is the sticky paint, the fresh paint, the soft paint, um, the haze prone paint. And uh, those of you that have been polishing for a long time, you've certainly come across this scenario. So when you evaluate these different movements and different systems, um, we can look at what we would recommend and what we would not recommend. So in the scenario of delicate paint, we would give it to the random orbital system again as the absolute best performance on that particular type of paint. And we would not recommend the rotary, uh, mainly because it is so technique dependent and you would have to completely change your technique for this paint. Um, and it always has that tendency to leave a rotary induced swirl mark. Uh, it certainly can do the job, but requires a lot more skill, certainly. So with this, uh, this slide <clears throat> summarizes everything that we've been talking about in this webinar up till now. It's a very busy slide, but I just wanted to point out, if you look at the gold uh, stars on the right column with the random orbital, 
it tends to get the better ratings on uh, all these individual different uh, situations. So as a company, we are here to tell you that if you ask the question, uh, you have four polishing systems, which one's the best? Well, there's a short answer and then there's a long answer. The short answer is we would say our optimum, our best performance, all things considered, we would recommend to you the random orbital Bigfoot polishing system. Um, the gear driven and the rotary uh, are certainly great polishing systems and we would definitely recommend those for certain situations that we have already talked about. So the, the, the fact here is that Rufus as a company, we understand that you as a user have different preferences. You know, you prefer different movements, you prefer different strengths in different systems and whatever your preference is, uh, we as a company, we intend and we are very excited that we have a system for you. So we can apply that system to whatever your needs and your wants are. Uh, so with that, we're going to look at these systems in terms of their components. Hey, Jason, can we pause for just a minute and just remind everybody that they, in the chat box, I've got some questions in there for you guys and we'll save those at the end and we'll have Jason answer those for you. But uh, in the meantime, if you guys have any questions along the way, Go ahead and enter them into the uh, the Q and A box over there. Hit send, and we will uh, get to as many of them as we can at the end. Uh, hopefully, all of them. Uh, we may not be able to, but we'll follow up with each of you. But just want to give you guys a heads up that those of you who are putting questions in, if I'm not responding right away, we will uh, we'll answer those as a group when we get to the uh, end of the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Dylan. Uh, yeah, so just uh, if you have any questions, insert them in that chat box. We may not answer all of them. Um, we would love to have your questions regarding this content. So anything about our systems and uh, how we're comparing them, we would love to have those questions. But any questions at all, you can submit and we may or may not answer all of them. But uh, thank you for that, Dylan. So on screen, you will see our Bigfoot Random Orbital Polishing System. Uh, I have with me the, uh, the 21 millimeter. We also have the uh, 15 millimeter Bigfoot system. Um, and I apologize for that, I did not turn my phone off. <laughs> so in this random orbital system, this the reason that it would be recommended is that it guarantees no rotary induced swirl marks. Uh, it reduces the risk while we're polishing on paint and as well as that risk of uh, dieback or swelling the paint. So of all the systems, uh, this one has the least potential for that. We also, another claim to fame for this uh, particular system, and it has to do with the pads and the compounds and the movement of the tool, but relative to other polishing methods, the Bigfoot Random Orbital System tends to use a lot less compound. Uh, so if you're out there and you find you're using a lot of compound with this particular system, then we would encourage you to try using a lot less because the performance and the results are not dependent on a lot of compound. In fact, you will get the peak performance. You will get your best result if you actually use less. Um, that's the way the system was designed. So I want to point out that the system saves time in that uh, you can actually accomplish one step defect removal with the right combination of compounds and pads. And we have, as you see, a great selection to choose from, and it has to do with the paint hardness and the defect level, and you can switch from more or less aggressive. Now, these compounds and pads were specifically engineered and made for the large orbit random orbital movement. So it is a complete system that we have science through, and all the components work together to get the result. So also proud and happy to announce to you, if you have not heard, we have another system in the random orbital polishing category, and that is our uh, triple action tool. And this is a uh, pneumatic tool, obviously, uh, very, very small, very lightweight, uh, very smooth on the paint, but it does have a random orbital movement. It just has this really unique engineering that you can't see inside the housing, but this is unique to Rupus. Below here in the black section is a 
random orbital uh, counterweight assembly. And then above, up, up by the motor, out of the motor is a gear set. And it's a very uniquely designed um, epicyclic gear reducer. Fancy word, but what it does is it actually creates more torque and it helps the tool to be more consistent in the tool speed, even under pressure. So as the user goes back and forth, the pressure varies and the tool actually with this gear set, it helps to maintain that power to the pad. So it's a high torque, relatively lower speed polisher. And we have two triple action tools, um, different pad diameters. They are different orbit diameters, the 12 millimeter orbit for the five and a half inch pad and a 15 millimeter orbit with the three inch pad. So that's our triple action polishing system. Now I say system because it's not just the tools. We're talking about compounds and pads and the compounds and pads that are used with the triple action system are the same as you can see on screen that are used with the large orbit Bigfoot random orbital electric tools. So the same compounds and pads can be used in the triple action, <coughs> triple action system. Uh, next we have as a new introduction, I'm sure you've heard of, but this is our Miele gear driven orbital polisher. Uh, lots of engineering has gone into this and compared to other tools in this category of force rotation orbitals, uh, this is very, very smooth, really, really smooth action to the paint and uh, variable speed with a progressive trigger. So this is new technology built into this where you can dial in the high end speed on the dial and then you can vary and control the pad speed by the trigger. So it's called a progressive trigger. And you'll also notice that the pad uh, thickness and the shape of the pads are different. Uh, but I will also point out that in addition to the actual design of the pad, the compounds in the Miele system are different formulas, very specific to the gear driven movement. So in this scenario, we have the tool engineered by Rupus, the motors engineered and built by Rupus, and the pads made by Rupus and the compounds formulated and made by Rupus. So we are unique in the tool category in that we have all of the components and all of them contribute to the polishing result. So we have scienced out the synergies between these components. And that is the reason why we do this. So you can get the absolute peak performance possible uh, out of a system. So with that, we'll move to our rotary polishing system. This is not new to Rupus. We've had rotary tools for many years, but what is new is a new polisher that is an upgrade and lighter weight, very balanced, has uh, different diameters available up to seven inches. Uh, same broad uh, speed dial with the progressive trigger, just like the gear driven tool. You have much more control over the pad speed as you're polishing with this type of trigger. But once again, I will point out that the Rupus rotary system, if that's your polishing method of choice, we have dedicated compounds and specific pads that are again, different shape, different design. They're made differently. They're actually different foams. They're not the same foams. They are all made with the objective of getting the most performance out of a rotary movement. So the compounds, the pads, everything work together. So that is the uh, Bigfoot uh, rotary system. All of them are branded Bigfoot. And um, with that, <clears throat> I want to summarize that these four systems we consider best in class. Our objective is if we're going to do any polishing on paint, we want to have the best approach. And depending on your preferences of which movement, which system, we want to address that with some strong performance. So we have the triple action, the random orbital, the gear driven, and the rotary. And these are all different options for you as the user. So with that, I want to just open this up to um, questions. Dylan, do we have? 
Yeah, we got a few actually. One not specifically related to the presentation, but I think you can answer this one pretty quickly. I'll put it up on the screen for everybody. So microfiber pad always best to use with hard paint. Ah, okay. So the question is, is a microfiber pad the best to use on hard paint? And there's an answer for this. Um, when you're on hard paint, obviously you have to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of your compound choice, uh, perhaps the tool choice, perhaps technique. But when it comes to the pad, uh, the medium or the fine pads, they can remove heavy defects, but they will just uh, take longer on hard paint. So the objective is to switch to what we call a fiber pad uh, and go from foam to fiber. Um, and there's exceptions to this, but in most cases, this will boost your, your defect removal speed. And microfiber is one choice for a fiber pad, uh, but our new uh, Rupus wool pads is another choice. And they're both fiber pads. They both are considered uh, coarse or aggressive at removing defects. But there are some user preferences involved in this decision about whether to use wool or microfiber. So microfiber is a little bit more technique dependent. The user needs to think through things like uh, pad load, you know, paint uh, residue loading up on the, the microfiber pad and it requires frequent cleaning. It also needs to be primed properly, otherwise it will not perform as good as it could. Uh, and the buffing cycle is a bit different. Uh, things dry up faster with microfiber pads. So microfiber, although does remove defects much better on hard paint, it requires a little more skill. Uh, the wool pad, however, is not held by that requirement to have uh, technique and a lot of skill. So with the wool pad, you can actually remove a lot of defects. The residue doesn't uh, stick to the fibers as well as microfiber. Uh, there's not the stress about priming uh, properly. Uh, so they're, you know, they're a little less technique dependent with the wool pads. And the feedback we've gotten from the market has been very strong on our wool pads. Um, they perform really well at removing defects on hard paint. So hopefully that answered your question. Uh, you basically go to a fiber pad and you can boost your defect removal speed. All right, we got one. Uh, actually, uh, let's see, we'll push this one up there. Elvin's having some issues with his 21 on curves and contours, so maybe speak a little bit to, uh, like we talked about, edge work with the different tool movements. Uh, or actually, sorry, this this question was from Melvin as well, but this is about priming the pad. So how much compound? So maybe speak a little bit to the uh, the different priming methods for gear driven versus random orbital, for example. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. So priming is a very important topic. And uh, the reason it's important is you will not get the performance expected from a, a polishing pad uh, until it's properly primed. And for foam pads and microfiber pads and wool pads, the priming methods can be different uh, because they, the compound actually lays down on the material or absorbs into the material in different ways. So with foam, it's a simple matter of putting, you know, um, four or five pea-sized dots of the compound on the pad. You put that to paint slow speed setting, and then you leave it in one area, pull the trigger and gently move it around for about um, 30 to 60 seconds, which doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're actually counting uh, 60 seconds, it's, it's a long time. But what that does in priming that foam is it warms up the foam, it warms up the compound, and it gets things to flow over the surface a lot better. And once that has flowed over the surface of the pad, you'll get much better performance um, uh, compared to not priming. Now, microfiber, the priming is very important because you will get, not only will you not get the peak performance, but you can actually get a bad result if you don't prime properly. So microfiber 
needs compound on every single fiber. So every little hair on that pad, it needs to be lubricated with that compound. So you use the, uh, the Bigfoot uh, claw tool uh, or a putty spreader, or somehow, it doesn't matter how, but you get the compound spread evenly all over every fiber on that pad, and then you're primed. Now the wool, um, it's also good to get compound on every fiber, but it will do what's called self-priming. So if you spread it, you know, uh, briefly on the wool pad, the compound on your first application will automatically begin moving around in the fibers. So it's not as important. Uh, it would be good to completely, you know, prime every fiber with a wool pad as well. Um, but that addresses those three priming methods. Did that answer the question, uh, Dylan? Yeah, I think that answers it. Then the same, same guy, Elvin, here also had a question. This is the one I meant to push originally, which is uh, he's struggling a little bit with his 21 on curve panels and sharp curves. Uh, so maybe touch on the advantages for edge work with some of the other movements again. Okay. So, yeah, uh, this is what we call uh, pad stall. So with the 21, large orbit, large pad diameter, and tight curves and contours, the dual action of this tool has an orbit, which is gear driven, and it has a rotation, which is not. So this is a random rotation that can start and stop and speed up and slow down. And that is actually a built-in safety feature. So it's your friend. It's actually a good thing that that happens. So when it happens, I don't want you to think that, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. I need to adjust. So momentary pad stall with this tool is no problem. So if the rotation stalls momentarily because you're in a curve or a contour, it's not a problem because the orbit, being a large orbit and a lot of movement of the pad, that is doing all the work. It's doing most of the work. So momentary pad stall, no issue. But if you try and do the whole car with pad stall, that is when you're going to be stressing components. So you're gonna be heating up internally in the foam pad. You're gonna be heating up the backing plate. You're gonna be heating up your compound. So uh, the rotation helps to cool things down and it's part of the finishing process. So again, momentary stall, no worries, but you just don't want to allow that to do the whole car that way. So how do you address it when it happens? Well, there are two things you can do when you get pad stall with either the 21 millimeter or the 15. One of them is simply angle. So if you adjust your angle on that surface and you, with your eyes, you watch this backing plate, there will be an angle that you can hit that paint and it will kick in the rotations. So that's one way. The other way is with pressure, either more pressure or less, and you will see the rotation kick in again. Um, actually, there's a third way I can tell you, and that is to reach over your thumb, crank in some more tool speed to power through on that contour. And then when you get to a flat spot, drop that speed back down to setting four is what we recommend. Um, and so those are three ways, angle, pressure, and tool speed, and that will kick in that rotation. Uh, so hopefully that answered that question, Dylan. Yep, that knocked a few of them out. And then we've got one, actually, I'm surprised we didn't touch on this yet, but Joseph wants to know about the uh, CFM rating for the LTA polishers. Okay, so these uh, all pneumatics require some airflow. And when you're considering air tools, a lot of people focus on the PSI or the pressure and that is important, but the more, more important criteria is the volume of air delivered to the tool. Uh, so all of our air tools, they're somewhere in the CFM, which is cubic feet per minute. In, uh, in Europe and other parts of the world, there's a, a different unit of measure, but here in the United States, it's cubic feet per minute. And um, somewhere between 11 and 14, is where you'll find most of our tools. 
And some of them, uh, some other air tools on the market can be as high as 21 CFM. So you really need to pay attention to that. And I believe these tools, the LTAs are 14 uh, CFM. And uh, that's something you need to make sure that your air compressor can deliver to use these, uh, these tools properly. Perfect. And I'd also mention too, guys, if you haven't noticed on your panel there, there is a little box that says resources. We've replaced the Bigfoot system brochure in there that has the specs and all the stuff for the various tools in there. It's a PDF. You can download that and uh, all the different uh, all the different specs and things are available to you there. Uh, a couple more, Jason, if you don't mind. Uh, we actually have a question. We can talk about this all day. We can do this all freaking day. Uh, mm -hmm. So we got a question about the gear-driven compound for sticky paint. Um, given the lubrication system in there, um, will it be an issue uh, using the gear-driven compound on sticky paint systems? Actually, uh, not an issue, but it's a benefit. So there is a particular ingredient in the Miele uh, compound and the polish, and it has has to do with the lubrication of the system. So here is the, the Miele polisher. Uh, and what we learned about this movement and dialing in a compound for this movement is if there's any dry part of the pad, that dry part will try and grab onto the paint and it will try and hang onto it. And that results in a vibration. So we had to smooth this out and there's an ingredient in those compounds that helps to smooth that out and make it uh, flow better. Now that same ingredient happens to help you in the sticky paint scenario. So with, with the situation of sticky paint, which is more prevalent in some parts of the world and non-existent in others, but the uh, paint condition is really driving the, the issues and the problems when you're polishing it. So this particular paint is so uh, absorbent and it will take fluids and immediately yank them out. So on the very first pass with the polisher, it will immediately uh, do what's called an emulsion break and it will immediately tear apart the ingredients of your compound. It will leave the solids on, uh, on the pad and it will pull the liquids out. So Miele compound actually is your friend because it is, has this lubrication system in there and it will help you on sticky paint scenarios. And having said that, the technique adjustment, regardless of the tool and regardless of what compound, you can adjust your technique on this paint. And that is light pressure, fast passes, and short cycle. So remember that less pressure, fast arm speed, and less passes, so shorter cycle. So that will help you on sticky paint because the problem is people overcycle uh, too many passes on that particular paint. Awesome. And then one last question, I think we'll call this our last one is, uh, is it true that Rupus compounds are exclusively, I'm assuming designed to work with Rupus pads? Uh, yeah, uh, we did mention that earlier and the uh, this year actually last, uh, 18 months of our company history, we have made some major advancements in compounds and pads. And it is a true statement that these are exclusive Rupus formulas. They are created by us, they're made by us, and they've taken quite a lot of time to figure out because we're trying to get the absolute best performance with a particular movement of a tool. So the answer definitely is yes. They're proprietary to Rupus, and they're all about our particular movements, uh, especially our, our new polishing systems that we've launched uh, in the last 12 months. Cool, and that's uh, that's kind of runs the gamut on all the questions. So I'd just like to see you guys, if you wouldn't mind, type into the Q&A box uh, a yes or a no if you thought this was good content, if it was useful, enjoyable. It's, uh, we appreciate you all logging in. I mean, I know this is uh, an investment in your time, so hopefully this is uh, valuable content. You, you walk away with something that's uh, useful for you uh, in your business. 
Yeah, so we appreciate your comments. And uh, until next time, uh, we appreciate your time on this webinar, but we look forward to being with you on future core series webinars with uh, different topics. We'll, we'll do plenty of topics before the end of the year. So with that, thank you so much, and we'll talk to you next time.